Serious, what is something scary that has happened to you that you cannot explain rationally? I dreamt I was being choked and woke up to find my own hands around my throat. I posted this a long time ago but when I was younger my mom was dating this guy, who we will call JB, and after a few months he invited my mom, me, and my brother to go with him and his son, about my age, out to his lake house for the weekend. It was right on Lake Michigan but up in a more secluded area which was pretty awesome. While we got up there and for one I already felt really creeped out. It was a smaller two, maybe three if you count the really big attic, story house that had the living room dining room kitchen on the first floor and had two bedrooms on the second floor. His grandfather had helped to build the place with his, the grandfather's, dad and then he lived there for most of his life working as a tailor in the nearby town. We went up to the attic to get some beach toys because that's where JB kept all of that stuff so he didn't have to haul it every time he went out there. Well when we went up to the attic I noticed in the corner covered in some dust and cobwebs about 8 mannequins. Some just upper torsos and some full body. Not too out of the ordinary considering a tailor had lived there. Me and JB's son slept down in the living room on the couch since there were no more beds. And near midnightish I heard one of the stairs squeak a few times. Figuring it was my mom coming to check to make sure we were asleep I told his son to be quiet and quickly turned the TV off and hid under the covers. After not hearing any noise for a few minutes I looked out from under the covers and saw three of the mannequins moving around in the kitchen. Like their body parts weren't moving but they were sliding around the kitchen. I swore I was dreaming but was so terribly frightened I hid back under the covers with a small yelp and then heard the dragging on the floor coming closer and peeked out seeing one of them just a few feet from the couch. I hid back under the covers and shut my eyes tight hoping it would go away. The next morning I got up and tried not to think about it. Really really hoping it was just a bad dream but when we went back up to the attic to put the beach stuff back the mannequins were in different spots and weren't covered in cobwebs anymore. Don't believe me if you don't want to but it happened and I've been scared it less of mannequins ever since. I'm a little late. But screw it. I was in first grade. Hanging out at recess with a friend. He was shooting some hoops outside and I was playing DS, sitting on the pavement. I remember him asking me if he could make a shot from halfway across the court. I told him he could try but he probably wouldn't make it while looking at my DS. Suddenly, my dad asks me what I mean. And when I look up I'm sitting on my living room carpet, talking to my dad. And it's dark out. I was sitting in the same position, playing the same game, same level. And same exact spot in the level. Everything continued normally that night. And I didn't tell anyone at the time. But looking back it is really freaky. I thought it was a dream for the longest time. But thinking about it it didn't really feel like a dream. And I don't really remember dreams that well. TL. DR. Teleported through space and time once. When I was in uni I lived by myself. It was a nice little studio unit behind a house in a fairly decent area. I would honestly think nothing of walking places at night. There was a 24 hour McDonald's and a 7 Eleven that I would walk to. Often between 12 am to 3 am since I was a massive night owl. Well one day after finishing an essay at about 2 in the morning I decided I was hungry but didn't really have anything easy to cook so I decided to walk down to the 7 Eleven and grab a pie or something. However as soon as I opened my door I was overcome by a suffocating feeling of fear. My heart started pounding. I started shaking. The works. Telling myself that this was ridiculous I walked out to the street with the intent to still go but that was as far as I got. I was terrified for no reason that I could understand. But no less intensely despite that. I ran back inside and ate dry cereal. Later the next day I heard about a group of drunk guys that were causing havoc down near the intersection at the 7-Eleven. They'd beaten up someone from my uni. Even though I can't explain it, I'm convinced something bad would have happened to me that night if I had ignored that feeling and gone anyway. There was a small door that led to attic space in my bedroom, 11 years old to 13, and it became habit that I would shut the door as I walked into my bedroom a couple times a week. I didn't think anything of it, just assumed my mom didn't close it all the way when she left it. After a while I made the mistake of joking with her when she made a comment about me not picking up after myself. I said something like every night I have to close the attic door behind you. How about you shut it all the way when you're done she then informed me that she hasn't been in the attic in months. 
Asked my brother. Nope. Asked my father. Nope. So then I started to pay really close attention to it. Making sure it was closed in the morning. Checking it after school. Checking blaster dinner. Then head up to bed and. Open. After a couple months of wondering. Studying. Experimenting. I thought I'd see what happens if I just don't shut it. Opened the door before school and checked it after school. Still open. Checked it after dinner. Still open. Before bed. Still open. Now I'm laying in bed. Mind going crazy with the open door across the room. Decide to check it out so I roll over and focus on the black space into the attic. To see a face staring back at me. Bolt downstairs. Wake parents. Get ridiculed by brother. Switch bedrooms w brother. Move into new house about 6 months later. Due to expanding household. New physics teacher and his wife bought our house. I could have forgotten all about that event and chalked it up to me having an overactive mind. But then my senior year I discovered how awesome our physics teacher was. Became my favorite class and by far. My favorite teacher. End of senior year my friend and I took our VHS camcorder around town. Doing mostly silly things. But then took it to my old house to see what they've done with the place. We got a very fun tour. I got to tell stories about all the projects my dad did that were still part of the house. Then the wife leads us upstairs to show us the sewing room. I ask, jokingly, notice anything strange in this room and her face goes blank. On camera. She asks what I mean and I try to shrug it off but end up saying something about the attic door. She confirmed that every time she comes up to sew, the attic door is open. She then tells us that the second day of being in the house, their dog, German Shepherd, had gone into the room but would not go back downstairs. He started barking and could not be consoled, and then jumped through the window, landing on the tin roof over the porch and then running off. The dog did not come back until the next day and has not stepped foot into the hallway that leads upstairs since. I had the initial thought that I could show my parents and brother the story I had on film but I decided to just let it be. Edit a few extra details to satisfy the curious. Attic is the space in this house that runs parallel, like a Cape Cod, to the second floor, not above it. I was 11 and 12 when this was going on so I did not immediately science it all out. When I told my family that I saw a face, it was just my brother that ridiculed me. My father definitely would have checked it out for actual humans because one of the first comments he made was about a family that recently had a coin collection stolen from their house across the street. This event itself was easy to shrug off because I could chalk it up to a lot of other possibilities. Like the ones mentioned below. It wasn't until 5 years later that it became freaky. The look on the wife's face before she told us about the dog was very telling. Like something they decided to never put much thought into. Now my story added depth to their experience and their story added depth to mine. This did not make me a believer in paranormal. I told the story as a collection of details. Not as a confirmation of ghosts. What it did do was make me never be able to be a non-believer. Thanks for reading. Edit 2. I thought the blaster dinner comment was a reddit reference that was over my head. Like most of them. But just reread my story. Nice. Edit 3. Last details. The face was expressionless. I did not see a body. Just what appeared to be a dimly lit face staring at me. The door was an actual door. Just smaller. 2x4 feet, with a knob that has to be turned in order to open the door. I do not have the VHS tape from 20 something years ago. I moved a lot after high school and the tapes did not make it through all the moves. Happy Halloween, everyone. When I was 6 years old, I had a cat named Buster. Buster was actually my stepdad's cat. But because I never had a cat before, I claimed him as my own. Suffice it to say, Buster didn't like being hugged and coddled all the time by a little child. So he hated me. He avoided me at all costs. He was also an outdoor cat. So he would often spend most days outside and then come in for the night. One night, Buster didn't come back in the house. We usually fed him at night. So I was worried. Our area was also well known for an abundance of coyotes. My parents were being a bit hush hush about Buster's disappearance. But I didn't get the hint. That night, when I was drifting off to sleep, Buster jumped onto my bed. He lay down by my head and let me pet him until I fell asleep. Honestly, I was shocked because he had never done this before. The next morning, 
I triumphantly walked downstairs and related to my parents that Buster now loved me because he slept in my bed during the night. My parents looked at me inquisitively and sat me down at the breakfast table to let me know that while they were outside the night before, they had found Buster's body in the alley behind our house. They thought he had been harassed by a coyote, but he was dead, so he couldn't have slept in my bed that night. To this day, I like to think that Buster just wanted to say goodbye and thank me for trying to love him in the only way a child knew how. I used to work doing maintenance at historic properties. There was a historic house museum I worked at when it wasn't open to the public. It was part of a whole landmark site. There was a visitor's center with offices and then the house was about half a mile up a dirt road in a wooded area. Sometimes I worked with a crew, but there were a lot of times I was there alone. One winter day, when it was really cloudy and dark, I was working alone to get ready to replace some electric work on the exterior of the house. I went inside and turned off the circuit to the whole property, and I tested it. It was off. I locked the doors and went outside to work. After about an hour, I got down from my ladder and started walking around the house and then one of the lights inside the house turned on. I started to freak out, but thought that maybe someone was playing a joke on me. I called the visitor's center on my walkie-talkie, and confirmed that the only other person who was working that day was still there and hadn't left, and that all the keys to the house were present and accounted for. That's when I freaked out and ran the half mile up to the office. I made my co-worker come back with me to check out what was going on, but when we got to the house, the light was off again but the bulb was still warm. All the doors were still locked and the circuit was still off. Still gives me shivers to this day. TL. DR. Light turns on by itself in old house when the electricity is off. Which is literally impossible and super spooky. I know I'm a bit late. But I have a good story for this. So a few years back. Probably 6-7 years. My family was living in our previous home. This was our second house in we had in Ohio. The first house was about a street over from our second house. Well one night my mom woke me up and was acting really panicked. She grabbed my brother, who was probably 5 at the time, and told me to go outside. It was about 4 in the morning, and once we all got outside my dad tried to calm my mom down. He asked her what was wrong, and she had explained that she had a dream that we were all gonna die from carbon monoxide poisoning if we stayed in the house. Then my dad told her that all the detectors were working perfectly fine and we decided to go back inside. We didn't smell anything nor did the detectors go off. So we went to bed. The next day my mom was watching the morning news before we went to school. The first story for the day was that a local family was rushed out of their home because of a carbon monoxide leak in their home. Which could have been just coincidence. But then the news station showed the house. It was our old house that we just moved out of. There is actually a few stories that are pretty supernatural that I have about my family. But this is the shortest one to be honest. So I posted one of my other stories on Arthur Trothershire. Here is the link. Pretty sure I lived in a haunted house for a while. Strange things. For one I always felt like I was being watched in my room. And if I had the door open to the hallway I would swear I'd see someone walk by out of the corner of my eye. We had two cats and someone's they'd be in my room sleeping and then all of a sudden they would sit bolt up and stare at the door. And nothing I did could move them for a long time. This happened often. One day in my bathroom the shelf that had my sister's beauty stuff randomly lose hold of all of the items. The thing was the shelf wasn't loose or hanging and all the stuff had to bounce out of a 2 inch high lip into the sink. One time in the middle of the night my sister's 100 plus year old dresser she got as a gift from our grandma just fell over. This thing weighed a ton and it was built like a tank. Sister said she heard the sound of someone pushing. Mom and sister used to yell at me for sneaking around the house. Only I wasn't home or I was in my room. They said they saw a man in shadows that was about my height. One day we also ran into the old owner and my mom casually asked the lady if she had ever experienced anything in the house. The lady started crying and said no one believed her but yes. She experienced a lot of stuff. I moved out around that time. I do not miss that place. 
In my childhood home I would often hear touch typing coming from the computer downstairs early in the mornings. I didn't think much of it at first. My parents worked from home and it wouldn't be uncommon to wake up in the morning to hear mum typing away at the computer. One day I got up and called out to mum assuming she was down there working as I could hear typing. No answer. No one was down there at all. I was sure I heard typing. This began happening regularly. I figured I was so used to hearing typing from downstairs that I was hearing things that weren't there. So I didn't mention anything to anyone figuring I was going a bit crazy. This happened on and off over a period of 6 months. A sound of fast typing and fast. Furious clicking of a mouse as if someone was frustrated. One morning I was eating my breakfast when I heard mum at the top of the stairs call out to me. You're not down there on that computer already? I froze and ran out to her. I was amazed she had heard it too. She was convinced she could hear typing. Yet no one was down there. I told her about all the times I'd been hearing it and then my sister opened up about hearing it regularly too when no one was down there. I wasn't crazy after all. I set out to try catch whatever was causing it and to try discover a rational explanation for it. I'd sprint out of my bedroom. To the top of the stairs where I was able to look down into the room to see if anyone was at the computer. No such luck. Every time I got there it stopped. I think it went on for a couple of years and we learned just to kind of live with it as it wasn't every day. I was down there once when the ceiling light globe in the center of the room began flashing very fast. Strobe like. It then exploded and glass went shattering all across the room. I was lucky I ran out of the room when it started happening because I was scared. The whole mysterious typing. You know, if I hadn't ran I would have been hit with bits of light bulb. Around that same time I was on the computer at home by myself when something happened that resulted in me never being alone in that room again. I felt and heard this really sharp intake of breath directly behind my right shoulder near my ear. I've never ran so fast in my life and was hesitant going in that room ever again. Prior to that. The whole typing thing had just been something weird and a bit spooky, not scary. Still makes my heart race when I think about it today. Have never really encountered anything like this before or since all those events. I don't particularly believe ghosts either but I'm open to the possibilities of something in which scientists don't have a proper explanation for yet. TL. DR Ghost was a proficient touch typer who had a breathing problem. Family moved into an old house. 200 plus years, when I was 10, uncle, weird guy, was going to help us move in and when we got inside the house he got all weird and left, always avoided coming for birthdays etc, we always joked he saw a ghost and for some reason we nicknamed the ghost Billy, when my little sister started talking she would say really weird things, like asking if we can shut her door at night so she doesn't have to see the boy walking down the hallway, ducking creepy anyways we thought she was also just being a big weirdo so we continued to have this billy the ghost joke something would get misplaced must be billy yada yada a few years later we ripped up the flooring because we wanted to go back to the original hardwood that had been covered up forever ago by old owners and if you know anything about old houses you know they used to insulate the floor with newspaper when newspaper just became a thing decided to read some articles for fun some talking about the first ever refrigerators. Really cool things like that. Until we got to the creepy part. A mentally challenged boy named Billy who lived in our home. Died while playing outside of it. I saw a lot of it growing up in that house but I'm not a huge ghost believer. The newspaper was a ducking creepy coincidence though. Given that for years we had an ongoing Billy the ghost joke. Uncle also ended up telling us years later that when he pulled into the driveway and was outside of the house he just got this awful feeling. In 1975 I was flying an army helicopter doing night training in blackout conditions near Fort Hood, Texas. I was flying down a draw with a small seasonal creek in it which was the new paradigm. Designed to mask the aircraft from Russian radar. I was at the controls. My co-pilot on the map. We were low and slow treetop to treetop. Suddenly I had the compelling sure knowledge that I must do an emergency climb, which I did climbing almost vertically. As I pulled the guts out of the aircraft and with my nose pointed up to the stars in my chin bubble I observed the leaves of a cottonwood tree being pressed aside by the plexiglass of my chin bubble. After a couple of seconds and now a few hundred feet above the canopy my co-pilot and I stared at each other with wide eyes and the knowledge we barely avoided death. How did you see that ducking tree? He asked me. 
I never did tell him that I didn't. Because I have never known how to explain it. I went on to fly helicopters for 37 years. Accident free and I still can't explain what happened that night. I signed up for an account so that I could post this. It's very long. And I apologize in advance. 12 years ago, my brother died. And for that whole first year, a lot of super weird had happened to our family. The only conclusion I can come to, and I do really believe this, was that he was trying to contact us. A week after his funeral, my mom was home by herself and the phone rang. This was about 2pm. The caller ID said that it was my brother's house, so she figured it was my sister-in-law. Mom answered and when she said hello, there was no sound on the other end and no one answered. She said hello, again, and still no answer. Then the call disconnected. She waited till about 6pm when my sil came home from work, and she called her to ask if she'd come home from work and called her earlier. My sil said no. She asked if the kids had come home early so my sil asked my niece and nephew if they had come home to call gran in the middle of the day, and neither of them had. They were in school the whole time till the end of the day. The phone was mounted to the kitchen wall, and the receiver was on the hook. So it's not like the dog knocked it over and accidentally stepped on speed dial. We think it was my brother making contact to let my mom know he was around. My sil is an amazing cook, and she has many kitchen utensils and tools that are very specialized. That you only use for one thing. For example, a certain knife you'd only use for fish or some such thing. Over the course of that first year he was gone. Many of the utensils that my sil would use to make my brother's favorite dishes started to disappear. She didn't loan them out. No one borrowed them. I asked a friend of mine who's really into the supernatural about it. She said, does your sil believe in ghosts and such? I said, no. She's super no nonsense and really doesn't believe. She said, that's the problem. He's trying to get her attention so he wants her to talk to him. He misses her. He's trying to let her know that he's still around. A year after my brother died, my dad's laddie friend's father died, and a year after that, she was still having a lot of problems coping with her dad's death. So she went to her psychic to see if she could make contact with him. So the psychic tells her all the things she wants to hear. Yes, of course, your dad is in the room, etc, etc, stuff that anyone could say to her. Then the psychic says, your dad's here, but there's a much younger man with him also. He's very tall and thin, with dark hair and glasses. Normally, dad's laddie friend would have thought of my brother, but she was having such a hard time coping with the loss of her dad that she just didn't make the connection to my brother at that exact moment. So she said, that doesn't sound like anyone I know. The psychic said, who's James? Dad's laddie friend said, he's my companion. The psychic said, the younger man has a message for James. He said, so please tell my dad that I'm okay. She realized it was my brother trying to get a message to my dad. The psychic knew nothing about my brother's death. Dad's laddie friend was strictly there to talk about her father. Two months after my brother died, I was kind of having a really bad day about his death. It was still very soon. And I was still grieving. I went out to Target in my neighborhood to run some errands. Sunday morning. Very early right when they opened. And on this particular day. I had my hair up in a ponytail, I was going up the escalator to the second level, and suddenly I felt someone tug my ponytail so just in a friendly manner, like who'd tap someone on the shoulder. There was one girl I worked with who lived in my neighborhood, and I thought, that early on a Sunday in this neighborhood, it could only be her. So I turned around, expecting to see my co-worker behind me with a big grin on her face and I was alone. I was alone on the escalator. There was no one else on there with me, and the store was still mostly empty. Nine months after he died, I was in bed sleeping, and it had to be around 3am or so. Suddenly, I felt someone sit on the edge of my mattress so I actually felt the weight of this person sit down. I felt the edge of the mattress dip. I gasped, because naturally I figured someone had broken into my bedroom and was going to attack me or something. I was laying on my stomach. And before I could roll over and see who it was, I felt this person lean up against me, very gently like they were trying to hug me without waking me up and rest their cheek on my hair. I couldn't see anything. But at that point, I bolted upright and screamed. 
and snapped on the light. There was no one there. You guys. I swear on my life. To this day, I could feel this person lightly hugging me. I could feel their cheek against my hair. I felt the mattress dip down when they sat. It's been 12 years since he died. And to this day, there's been no way to explain any of this. Sorry this was so long for my first post. But when I saw the topic, I couldn't help but register so I could post. Probably too late but here goes. I was working at a hotel in Albuquerque. The graveyard shift. I had been talking to the security guard and he asked if he could get a ride home. So instead of waiting for 30 minutes for my shift to end I just left and left a note for my boss that said I left early because my brother was stranded outside of town and needed me to get him, total lie on my part but I needed a good excuse to leave early. I drop off the security guard at his place then go home and go to sleep. A couple of hours of sleep and I wake up to my phone ringing. It was my brother, he tells me he is stranded outside of town and he needs me to go get him. I tell my brother the lie I told my boss and how much of a coincidence his calling me is. He says that's not weird he will show me what's weird when I get there. I get there and ask him what is weird. He puts his phone up to my ear and plays a message that he got when he woke up that morning. It's a voice that kinda sounded computerized but mostly just creepy sounding. It says, you're stuck. Freaked us both out. Never figured out where the call came from. Strangest creepiest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. Sleep paralysis. I've had experiences where it felt like my soul was being sucked out either from my chest or my face. Kind of like being attacked by Dementor. I can't yell or move. So it really sucks. This wasn't me. But I saw it happen and it made me question my non-belief of the supernatural. Last time I was in New Orleans. I took a couple friends to the Marie Laveau Voodoo Museum. Which my friend Jessica was not too impressed by. Later that day we were walking back to the Airbnb apartment we had rented and wandered past a house that had one of those historic location plaques on it. Turns out that house had been Marie Laveau's father's house. As we are all standing out front of this house, Jessica is complaining about how it is she thought the museum was and her brand new Galaxy S5 went flying out of her hands and landed a good 5 feet away. Totally destroyed. I was looking right at her when it happened. She didn't trip. She wasn't wildly throwing her arms around. There was no explanation for why her phone would have taken a leap like that. Also, it wasn't just a little scratched up like it had been dropped. It looked like it had exploded from within. A friend of mine's house burned to the ground when I was younger. And his family moved across the street in a house that they rented for a bit. The basement in said rented house wasn't finished. So being middle schoolers we decided we would use the basement to ride skateboards and scooters. So after one night of skateboarding we head upstairs to watch scary movies and pass out. Neither of his parents nor his sister were home. Went to his grandparents for the night if I remember correctly. As we were getting close to sleep, we hear a something hit the ground really hard on the concrete of the basement. So being dumb teenagers we decide to investigate. As we open the door to the basement and peer down, we just see a skateboard floating midair. We sit and watch for a few seconds and then it drops suddenly. And very violently. Needless to say we packed our it up and sprinted back my house. Not much sleeping happened that night. His family moved out soon after and we tend to avoid that house as much as possible. A week ago tomorrow, the 20th of October, I came home from class at around 11.30 and no one else was home. I hung out at home for a bit and at 2.30 I was overcome with sleepiness. Being the bum that I am, I lay down in my bed and set a timer on my phone for a 20 minute nap. I fell asleep quickly and after around 5 minutes I was woken up by my bedroom door opening and had a split second of panic before my dog jumping up onto my bed and laying down next to me. I fell back asleep. After another 5 minutes of sleep, I instantly jolted awake because I was certain there was someone standing next to my bed. Behind me. I assumed it was my mother. Who would likely be pissed that I was sleeping in the middle of the day. I woke and turned around in one movement and there was no one there. Weird, I checked my phone and had another 8 minutes of sleep left. I went back to sleep only to be woken by my phone ringing. It was my mother. She said that my great aunt, who had been in the hospital after a stroke like event for a week, had died around 1 o'clock. My mom then said she knew my aunt was going to die today because she had seen a wraith. 
a sort of ghost, usually warning of someone dying. That morning, my mom is Scottish and very superstitious but I don't believe in any of that. She said that when she woke up that morning to take my brother to school, she went in my room to see if I was still asleep. She saw a wraith standing next to my bed. My brain at itself. Pix. When I was little, I would go over to my grandparents' house frequently with my sister and cousins. My grandparents have an attached mother-in-law apartment, so we always played in there while the grown-ups would talk in the main house. One day we were playing hot and cold with a little key we found in the apartment, while one person was hiding it. They accidentally dropped it and it fell under the door to the basement. I opened the door to get it and when I did, there was a man standing at the bottom of the stairs that I didn't recognize. He had a bunch of stuff in his arms, like he had rummaged through my grandparents' basement. Keep in mind, my grandparents were hoarders. Their basement was full of stuff that they either forgot about or put in storage. Some of it being relatively valuable. When he saw me, he yelled at me go back upstairs. Kid, go. I was so freaked out, I bolted and immediately ran into the main house to tell my parents. My dad went into the basement to look, but couldn't find anyone. To this day they all tell me I imagined it. But my sister and cousins insist it's real too. About 5 years later, both of my grandparents passed away, so I was helping my dad clean out their basement. Turns out they were missing a ton of stuff. I haven't gone back in that house since. I was home alone for a weekend a few years ago while I was still in high school. After school one day I was driving home. And when I passed in front of my house I thought I saw some old lady in white clothes in my sister's room looking through the window. I thought it was stupid. So I went in the room to check out what it actually was. But I couldn't find anything. I pretty much forgot about it until later that night I got a call from a very panicked and scared neighbor saying there was some old lady pacing back and forth in my sister's room. I still have no idea what it was. And I've never seen anything like it since. Sometimes when I go to bed, I wake up with deep line cuts on my body, each time on different spots, on my neck, leg, arm, see dried blood around the wound and on my sheets, still don't know what the hell happened, it's only my bed and my sheets, and my nails are cut short mostly, I don't sleepwalk. 7 years ago I lived in a 2 story farmhouse. It was was built in 1908 and was both large and old. I was packing clothes and putting them in a small unused bedroom. I was wearing my mp3 player and, the last time I checked, it showed 3 fourths battery life. I was on my 4th, or so, trip and was hauling a load of shirts on hangers. It occurred to me the closet was empty too. Perfect. I'll just hang em back up in there. This closet was almost a second room. It had a short glossy wooden door. The area it was thrice as long as wide, with hardwood floors. The lacquer still smelled, even though I'm sure it was fresh a hundred years ago. I ducked fully inside and thought, this is a weird little place to be. Suddenly, the music doubled in volume and changed to something that wasn't music. It was like, I don't even know, rapid nonsense. Fast electronic babbling. It scared the entire duck out of me. I flew straight out, looked at my player and it was dead. I'm a pretty rational guy. That mp3 player would sometimes show more battery life than it actually had. It's done that before. And maybe the sounds were some sort of malfunction before shutting down. I don't really believe in ghosts. But I'm telling you. It shocked and frightened me to the core. My skin felt electric for an hour after. I never felt comfortable in that room again. TL. DR. Entered a creepy closet. MP3 player screamed gibberish and died.